Hi there, this is Michael Becker. And in this Tinderbox lesson, I'm gonna show you how to do annotations in a PDF file and to bring those over into Tinderbox and demonstrate my workflow. Um, so let me go ahead and show that to you. I'm gonna start out with first by kind of pointing out an article that I wrote um, a week or so ago about an end-to-end -end professional, academic, and personal 4Cs knowledge management workflow or process that I've developed. Um, the 4Cs process, and you can go ahead and read the article at your leisure, uh, is collection. So you collect a bunch of notes, you curate those notes, you create more notes through that curation process, which will lead to more collection and more curation. And then you go in a cycle here. And then once you're ready to contribute your knowledge, your new insights to the world, you move into the contribution process and you publish them out into any number of different formats that you want. Uh, for this particular session, we're going to focus right here on this curation process uh, today. Now, as I said, um, let me show you uh, the whole different pieces of the process that I use. So obviously we use the, our PDF editor uh, if we're uh, talking about highlighting PDFs. Uh, and for me, my favorite highlighting PDF editor is Highlights. Without a doubt, unquestionably, uh, um, it works really, really well for me and I've tailored it into my process. I'm also going to be using the Finder of the Mac um, to be able to demonstrate this. Uh, I, am, I use Zotero as my uh, reference manager and then I use the Dev and Think database. Now you don't necessarily need all of these pieces. Um, you can simply get most of this or vast majority of what you want to do just with the highlights and tinderbox. Um, but I'm going to show you my full end-to-end -end workflow and then you can um, use whatever elements or pieces of this process that work best for you. Um, now, let's just start with highlights in, in, in Zotero. So before I actually get to highlighting the app, what I do is I find a PDF file I like or an article on the web or anything that I, I happen to be working on. And then what I'll do is I will pull that article into my uh, Zotero database. And what that allows me to do is I'm then able to get uh, uh, my citation key. Uh, and I'll show you near the end how that plays out for me. So you see I've got a citation key called Agen and he co-wrote this article um, with uh, these people. And I, I use Agen because I don't need the lead author there and, and such, but you know, for now you'll see that I've got this citation key and that key is critically important and we're gonna come back to that later. Um, what I'll also do is I will drop the files into um, my Zotero database. Let me see if I can find that one uh, in my Zotero database. And I've got a bunch of notes here. I'm going to try to find that particular article, the database, or notes. All right. Um, okay, I'll just show you one, one, one example of an article. I can't find that specific one. But you'll see here, for instance, I will um, get articles um, into, into my Zotero database. Uh, and then what I'll be able to do is I'll right, right mouse click on them and then open those up into uh, using different readers. If I happen to find a PDF file, you'll see I can go ahead and open that up in highlights. That brings the item into highlights and then I can go through and start highlighting that PDF. Uh, and any highlights I make automatically get saved um, into the PDF. So that's a big part of my process. So now let's focus uh, on the highlighting. I'm gonna go ahead and remove some of these just so I can show you examples of the different styles of highlighting I do in uh, highlight. So you'll see I've already uh, highlighted and annotated this file um, quite extensively, but what highlights allows you to do is to highlight in a variety of different ways. Um, so as you saw me just deleting that, I can go ahead and say highlight in colors. So I can say for me, yellow is an, something uh, it's normal, it's maybe helping me concentrate to be able to highlight as I'm doing that, and so I highlight something in yellow. If I highlight it and say orange, um, that's really important to me, um, and uh, it's something that's re very relevant to my research. If I highlight something in red, it seems important, but I can't substantiate it. In this case, it's a fuchsia. That's just this, the color style I have on the computer, um, but um, you'll see here that highlights is considering that as red. Uh, and then if I highlight something in blue, uh, blue for me is a quote. So I wanna actually quote this person down the road and I find that really valuable. So those are my three, my four primary colors. Uh, other things you can do with highlights is you can underline uh, and I can go ahead and strike through as well. Uh, and then finally, you can go ahead and add your own comment. So let's say I go here and say add a comment and I'll say this is my own idea, okay? and I click away, and you'll see I've got a comment that says this is my own idea, and it's text. 
uh, and I don't want it to be blue, so I'm going to go ahead and um, you know, make this an, an, another color, all right? Um, and I'll you can explain why, why later why I don't want that to be blue, but I want my, my quotes just to be um, in that color blue. I mean, excuse me, it's it just in a white color. And then the last thing you can do when you're highlighting is I can go ahead and grab an image. And you see there, I've got an image. Um, so that's different ways to be able to highlight. And so you can go through and you can do your articles and you can get a lot out of, uh, out of that piece. Um, now, before we go to the next step, there's some settings that you need to set in the highlight file. So you open up highlights and you go to preferences. And you'll see here a um, few settings I need to make. First, on the new format section, I want to make sure I include the page link, uh, page number, annotation color, annotation type. Uh, I also want to include the, um, the line in between the exports as I'm, I'm going through that, uh, that process. Uh, and then I also want to make sure that I've got the export format set as markdown uh, and that I have them separated as uh, individual files. Now, those are the steps you would do to set up your, your preferences and how do you highlight and, the, and I've showed you how I use the different apps. Now what I want to do is show you how you export. So I can go down to highlights and hit export and you'll see here I can export out to Markdown file. Now, uh, I'm still trying to figure out some of the core things in the process, and there's some pieces, of the various pieces of software uh, that aren't working as I'd expect. So when I'm exporting out of highlights, I'm expecting it to come out as individual files, but it doesn't seem to be doing that when I'm sending it to Finder. It will do it when I send it to DevonThink, and I'll explain that in a minute. If I open up this file here, you'll see here are all of the, fi uh, the, hi the highlights that we've made in that file all uh, separated into Markdown. Okay, the other way I can get, uh, I don't need to save and delete that, the other way I can get highlights uh, out of, or annotations out of Tinder, uh, out of uh, highlights, is I can send them to DevonThink. Now let me move DevonThink over so you can watch this happen in real time. So you'll see here, if I go ahead and hit export to DevonThink, whoops, you're not seeing that on the screen, let me pull that over. If I go over here and say, export this to DevonThink, you'll see that DevonThink appears, it pops up, and there are all of my highlights and annotations there. Okay, now we've got all of our annotations and we're ready for Tinderbox. So I bring in my Tinderbox file and I've got my DevonThink. Okay, and so now all I need to do is, in, while I'm in DevonThink, I go grab each of these individual notes pull them over into my Tinderbox. Tinderbox knows them and automatically creates a note for every one of the items. Um, the one thing I didn't notice, and I think I might have mentioned it, but I want to re-mention it. You'll see here in the file name, Agen2020. Uh, so in my DevonThink file, when I put in a PDF in the file, I make sure that the file name, you know, like here's one Doctoro, um, I have a very specific format. It's basically two, de two hyphens, the name, and then two hyphens. Um, and so, um, at least two hyphens, and so that's important, and I'm going to show you why later. Uh, but that will, um, as, as a key piece, that I have the uh, citation name in the file. It won't break anything if you don't have it, but there's value of having it in there for me. Uh, and now, if you look, here is the markdown, and you'll see that um, the, the first uh, kind of heading one uh, using markdown parlance is the title, heading two is the author's name. Heading three is some other details uh, about the publishing citation elements, including the DOI URL, uh, if you have it. Heading four is the highlights links. Uh, heading three is uh, you know the page number the highlight was on, the color that I used, and the type. Is it a highlight, a square? Let me see if I can find some other ones that are show you the different um, the different types. You know, here's the, here's the square um, that you know as we said that's an image, and then you'll I've got a couple of my own quotes or comments um, in here that we can pull out later. And so you can see um, all of the, and you know, here it is. Here's one that's my own comment. So this is my own words, not something I've annotated in the file. And so one of the big questions is now, how do we distinguish between all these annotations that we now have in Tinderbox and clean all of this up? So let me show you how that works. Um, I've created some um, prototypes to first start, uh, help me out with that. So I've got prototypes that are quotes. Um, annotations, notes, um, I've got Im and images are the three uh, main prototypes that I've created for the file. And I've also created a fairly extensive stamp. Um, and you'll see this stamp, what this does is this goes through and parses out using various forms of regex and action code uh, the management of that file. And I'm going to pull it up in B BB Edit 
to help you see it a little bit more. So here's the stamp uh, in BB Edit. It's just a little easier to see. And you'll see essentially what it's doing is it's using regex, going through the file, parsing out different pieces like the author's name, the URL, the DOI URL, the page number, the highlights. Then once it's done that and populated the attributes, I'm having it then read. Like if it's text, do this. You know, use the, uh, the, uh, the prototype note. If it's a square, use the prototype image. If it's a strikeout, do this, do that. If it's a color, do something else. And you can read that at your leisure um, to see how I put that together. And later, and maybe in another video, we can go line by line and talk through all of these different pieces and, and how it worked. Um, but let's go ahead and show you what happens now. Now, I've noticed if I select too many of these at once, um, the, the file crashes. So I think my action code may have a uh, memory uh, link in there somewhere or not sure what's going on. So I'm gonna reach out to Eastgate and ask later. So I'm just, for the purposes of this demo, I'm just gonna select the first few and apply it. Oh, see, there you go. Um, that happens sometimes. It could be there's some kind of memory leak either in this particular file or in one of the many other ones that I already have open. And we'll go ahead and apply that stamp and you'll see it automatically changed all those notes. We'll apply it to a few more. Okay, and you'll see there's an image, there's a quote. I'll we'll apply it to a few more. A few more. A few more. There you go. And so we've gone ahead and applied these and it sees this as quotes as well, um, which is fine. And uh, we can go ahead and take a look at uh, the rest of what's going on. So you'll see here it's cleaned up all of the code. It's pulled out the citation and put it in the citation attribute. It's told me what kind of highlight it is. It's told me what pages it's on. And let me show you some other really cool things. So if I go over here and let's say I scroll all the way down and I'm gonna look at one of these, it's on the bottom of the page. If I click on the highlight URL that I pulled out, it will actually open up the file and jump right to that page to tell me where that, that link is. Um, similarly, let's try it again. If I, go, if I wanna say, oh, I'm gonna go see where that was quote was in situation within the file. Click on there and jump to me and there it is right there in the quote. Uh, also, let me pull over my browser. If I open up my browser and bring the browser back in, You'll see here if I click on the DOI URL that we've extracted from the text, it will actually bring me right to the DOI reference um, for that particular citation and we can learn more about it. So the stamp that I've created essentially helps me parse all through that and you'll see that then semantically we can now know the yellow ones are the ones that are, are of interest to me but not necessarily critical, the blue ones are my quotes, these orange ones are really important for my research and then I can then use various other tactics and action code to split those out, put them into folders, run agents, do a whole variety of other stuff to help me sense make the process. You can also then go back to some of my other videos like linking with Tinderbox to then be able to use the values of the attributes to automatically have those notes linked to each other. Um, but that's enough for now. Uh, so what we've done is we've demonstrated how to highlight in an application called uh, Highlights App. Uh, pull those highlights into a markdown file and then get them over into other supporting applications like Finder, Tinderbox, um, using Zotero for citation management, pulling those into Tinderbox and then automatically running some stamps uh, to uh, essentially start making some uh, really cool insights and to be able to drill down and analyze um, all of these notes um, at your leisure. So I really hope this uh, you find this video helpful. Again, this process that I've been working on, particularly with this Highlights app, is super new. So if you come across any um, you know, feature, uh, you know, ideas, to ways to make it better, um, or um, more refinements that we can make, please be sure to reach out to me. Um, I would be excited to you know, have those conversations with you. Uh, and then, as always, if you don't mind, please be sure to like the, this video and uh, subscribe to the channel and let your friends know, because uh, the more the merrier in the community. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye.